Hi, I'm James Canterbury, and I teach 8th grade science at Worthing Way Middle School. These are very unusual times. We thought it would be interesting and helpful to share some information about what this school year is going to look like, both for the students and for those caring adults at home. So what you're about to see, we hope, is some helpful information and some things that will uh, enable you to help your student and the student to help themselves be a success here at Worthing Way. Well, it's not exactly the curriculum night we expected, but here's the information I told you about. A little bit about me, former television meteorologist. I spent eight years though, the last eight years, teaching science, all of them at Worthing Way. I was inspired by legendary teachers when I was young, and I revisited those thoughts and that love of science and that need to have a dream to help others in science. So I left meteorology and went back to school and became a teacher. I was born here. I lived in Westerville. And while I grew up in central Illinois, I will always consider myself a Buckeye. Here are a few more pictures and interesting fun facts about myself. Your student will get to make one of these, and it will be happening during our first week of school here. So look for this really awesome project in your kid's Schoology course and ask them how it's coming. They'll be proud of it, and I know you will be too. If we're in a hybrid situation, here is what a schedule would look like. If you're in the blue group, you would have a Monday, Wednesday, every other Friday in-person rotation. And then the next week you would have Monday, Wednesday in person, but you would not attend on Friday. And on those days that are green, you would be expected to get on your Schoology and find work that your teachers have left for you to do on those days. Everything is true for the green group, except you would meet in person on Tuesday, Thursday, and every other Friday. If we are in a remote situation, here is the schedule. We've cut out some time for connections. That is when teachers and or students can reach out and try to get some extra help, answer a question, share some information, or just to hang out for a bit and continue to get to know one another. Now, what does the class look like? Well, let's take a look at the topics that we're going to be covering in eighth grade science. We will start with life science this year, and here are some topics. If I had to summarize these topics, I would say life science in eighth grade is all about how life starts and how life continues and how next generations are created. So mitosis, meiosis, these are processes at the cellular level, but then you get into sexual and asexual reproduction, which is reproduction at the organism level. We'll get into all the other bits here in detail as we go through the year. But life science is very heavy on chromosomes, genes, traits, and uh, pedigrees of families and also how those traits and characteristics have changed over time. Now, earth science is next. This is the biggest portion of eighth grade. It will take an entire semester and it is my personal favorite. If I had to summarize earth science, I would say that it is about how we got our planet, how our planet is organized or arranged, and how it changes, be it short period of time versus long period of time, or how it changes on the surface versus how it changes in the deeper layers. Finally, we'll end the year with physical science. This is really about forces, motion, and different um, potential energies created by those forces. Now, expectations for class. These are the expectations that my students have told me these are what we value. So these are the uh, expectations for behavior in class. Kindness, respect, teamwork, honesty, selflessness, and to be responsible. How do we approach science as a course? Well, we teach it in small chunks and we give those small quizzes at the end of each chunk. 
Usually four or five chunks will equal a unit. And at the end of those four or five chunks or four or five quizzes, we will give a unit test. All of those quizzes will be correctable, and you can win points back that you missed the first time you took it. The summative unit tests, however, are not correctable. However, you can still improve your unit test score by taking advantage of what we call plus options. That's our term for bonus points. If you take advantage of the plus options, every point you get will go right on top of our unit test score, and that will be a way that you can boost a poor unit test. We try our best to involve inquiry learning, and we do that by starting every new idea with activities that don't necessarily have correct answers, but they are an exercise in thinking deeply. We have a textbook, and we have an online version that is interactive. It can be read to the student through the online text, which is really neat for those who uh, find that way of absorbing the material and reading it and comprehending it helpful. How do you get to Schoology? We're going to be utilizing Schoology this year. Go to the portal, and just as if you would try to get into Infinite Campus, instead of clicking Infinite Campus, once you're in the portal, you click on the big white S for Schoology. My course looks like this one. You would click that button, and this is the first thing you would see. These are the two areas that we will be spending most of our time in. The buttons will be a hot link to get you right where we need to be. Whether it's a link to Zoom for an, a live class meeting, you would click the Zoom button. Green button is for assignments, and the purple button is to reach me. Also on the far right there is a look at the calendar. This will tell your student what assignments they still have to complete and the date that they are due. And I mentioned it for a campus. That's where we're going to keep all of our grades. Get onto the portal and click this green button. We'll be utilizing gizmos this year. We find those at explorelearning.com. Those are going to be very helpful. They are virtual simulations that we'll either use to introduce or to reinforce a topic. We'll also be using some FET models from Colorado. Uh, that will be happening more during the physical science. And if you have a question or a need, or if your student has a question or a need, you can reach me by these modes of communication. Finally, some tips for success. Students, this is for you. Number one, ask questions. It doesn't have to be in front of others, but ask questions. It's the only way to learn. Number two, 80-20. This means I expect 80% of your mental focus on class when we are together. But we're not robots. We can't spend 100% of our mental focus together just doing science, so I give you 20%. But you have to earn that 20% by giving me 80% of your mental focus. Enter class or enter our Zoom meetings ready to learn. That means mentally. That means having materials. That means entering with success in mind. Give the respect you want from others. It's going to be a very long year if you expect what you don't give. And finally, self-advocate. This means you are one year away from being a high school student. If you are having struggles, you need to seek out your teacher or a trusted adult. It doesn't have to be in front of others. It could be privately, through email, or through voicemail, but reach out. Communicate, communicate, communicate. So these are just the helpful tips, suggestions, and information that we feel will make your student a success here at Worthing Way and in eighth grade science. If you have any questions, be sure to reach out. Our phone number here at the building, 614-450-4300. And if you need to get a hold of me, my contact information is here in the video. Take care, good luck, and have a great year.